How cool would it be if my Swiss Army knives had an integrated diamond file with a coarse and a fine side, which I can use as tool sharpener? How cool would it be if I can remove this file so that I'm able to resharpen the tools on the knife which carry this file? How cool would it be if this file is as long as the big tools from your Swiss Army knife and not just a mini sharpener? How cool would it be if this file doesn't make your knife thicker because it fits in a gap? How cool would it be if you find the perfect file for every different model sizes? And how cool would it be if this sharpening tool costs less than two bucks? After the intro, I'll show you the almost perfect solution. Hello YouTube! Welcome to another Swiss Army Knife Workshop video. In this series, I show you maintenance and customization tricks for your Swiss Army Knife. The link for the playlist for my previous videos you find in the description box below. In this video, I will show you a surprisingly simple solution for a removable tool sharpener on your Swiss Army Knife. We all know the Swiss Army Knife steel is very, very corrosion resistant. And it's a tough steel, it's easy to resharpen, but compared to a modern powder steel or a good uh, carbon steel, he doesn't hold a sharp edge very long. So for a heavy user like me, it would be fantastic if there is a possibility how I can resharpen the tools from a Swiss Army knife in the field without always carry a separate knife sharpener with me. Then in the situation I use the knife sharpener the most, I leave it at home for sure. In the past I saw a lot of videos from YouTubers which use these uh, soft nail pads for regrinding their convex edge knives and obviously this works pretty well. So um, I asked me, hey, what's about this other kind of nail files, these uh, sapphire nail files? They looks like this. So I bought one, they cost less than, than two bucks. And uh, the first test <laughs> was amazing. <laughs> this worked uh, incredibly well. Then I tested more, and yes, after maybe the, the eight or ten knife, it lost a bit of aggressivity. But uh, hey, uh, this is anyway on the on the rough side. This, after many knives, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know hey, what is this exactly? Why this works that well? So I contacted these companies who make uh, such uh, sapphire nail files. And they told me all the same. Basically, the sapphire nail file consists of corundum particles which are embedded in nickel matrix. The basic material is spring steel because these nail files have to be flexible. At the end, the file is chrome plated so that it doesn't oxidize. This is actually pretty much the same as on a diamond file. Of course, on the diamond file there are diamond particles on, in the nickel matrix. But here are much cheaper corundum particles. But you have to know that corundum is a commonly used abrasive material for steel. On the Mons hardness scale, uh, corundum has the value 9, uh, diamond has 10, and uh, silicon carbide has 9.5. So if you ask me, hey Felix, can I regrind my 60 Rockwell knife with this sapphire nail file? <laughs> I would say probably not. But, uh, a 56 Brock versus Army knife blade works perfect. As you can see, you can buy such files in a lot of different sizes. None of them cost more than 250. This is Swiss francs, but dollar or euro is the same. The cheapest was 170. If there was a sizing information on the packaging or in the description, they measured the total length of the file. So this file, for example, have 12 centimeters from the end of the handle to the tip. But not all files had the size information. Sometimes they wrote just big or small. As I made these tests with the files, I realized that they all have pretty much the same shape as the wood saw from the different Victorinox models. Look at this. So this 10 mm file fits to the 48 mm model. This 12 mm file fits to all uh, 91 mm models. 
This 15 cm file fits to the 111 meter models. And this 17 cm file fits to the 130 mm models. But the size is not that important. And anyway, there are a slightly difference in size and shape from each manufacturer. So um, just work with the files you can order in the internet or you can buy in the supermarket around the corner. But because of these similar shapes from these files and the wood saws, I started to study how can I store these files next to the wood saws. Another reason for storing the file next to the wood saws is the small heel after the base part. Every saw has such a little step. Can you see it? I wanted to use this base. I shortened the files so that they don't overlap the step. And I made this with an ordinary hacksaw, but maybe you have a more elegant solution. So look at this, they fit perfect. Now the question came up, how can I attach the sapphire file to the wood saw? My first idea was to magnetize the file with a magnet, but this doesn't really work well. The next idea is to simply clamp the file between saw and liner. You have to try out on which side of the saw it works better. In general I can say don't do this if your knife is a museum piece or a few scratches is a problem for you. If it doesn't hold as much that the file can fall out, you just can take a piece of shrink tube and fix it like that. I'm sure you will find a solution how you can store the file safely. One last tip. A nail file is pretty thin. It's thinner than a millimeter. So if you want to resharpen the knife and you give a little bit pressure, the nail file bends through. That's why you have to lay the nail file on a flat edge, then it works perfect. If you don't find a flat area somewhere in the nature, just take a piece of a straight branch and make it like this. So my friends, I hope this was interesting for you, try it out, give me feedback in the comment section, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next Friday.
Tchau!